Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here. Look at this happiness. I had so much fun creating it. Here are the supplies that we'll be using today in today's project. So the, I've got some random papers here, but they're the majority of the papers are from two collage packs and those two collage packs will be on sale. And then one of the sheets will be free in the resource library. Um, and so I am starting this project with creating some papers because I knew that I wanted to have some really interesting papers in the background um, to kind of really show through. And I wasn't exactly sure what I needed. So I decided to kind of make my own and I knew I wanted some black, some real contrasting um, patterns. So I just grabbed a couple of stencils. I've got the Spanish or Moroccan tiles. This is pattern two stencil. Um, I use a lot of stencils in today's project and all of them will be on sale this week for you. Um, so I did some black and then I decided to do some color because again, I wasn't really sure what I was gonna need. <clears throat> And so I just kind of put a little bit of everything out there. I did use the carved lines stencil, and this is the carved circles stencil. Um, just kind of getting some pattern to try and see what um, kind of sparked my interest once I started to get the papers down. So here's my collage papers, and I'm just kind of grabbing some random things and putting them down and trying to place them in some interesting areas where I think that they might show up, but trying not to think too hard. Um, that, that one main plant image that you see there, um, that's the one that's going to be free in the resource library. And I knew I wanted that one front and center because that was gonna be kind of part of the background um, of my piece. And so, and then I wanted some of these shapes to just kind of represent maybe ground um, maybe um, some hills, maybe something like that. Really kind of abstract. And so um, I've got my, my patterns out there. And then I knew that I wanted this circle one for maybe kind of the, the center of a flower. Again, I still hadn't really fully developed where I was gonna go yet. And so I'm just kind of making it up as I go. So I use a lot of different types of paints um, for this project. I use Nova Color, Lucas, Americana, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Um, but just really choosing the colors that I liked and, um, and trying to think of the top portion as sky, night sky, and then daytime sky. Um, really kind of trying to think outside the box and do uh, um, this really more abstract than anything and working hard to try and get lights and darks and still allow some of the pattern of the paper to show through because that's what I felt like was really going to bring the interest to this piece and so I've got some cerulean blue some indigo blue from Lucas some quinacridone violet in there for kind of that dark kind of night skyish kind of feel um, and i'm working hard to to create contrast and still um, not take away from some of the main images um, there's a lot of dancing that i do in this piece not sure exactly um, what is what's going to look good and what's not going to look good. I did bring in some teal um, mixed in with some of the blue to kind of give me that transition color between the sky and the ground. Then I've got some, um, this is called matcha green in Americana. And then I've got some fern from Lucas I've, and given some teal in there. I'm just kind of grabbing whatever kind of really feels good and mixing it together. Not really having any, again, any idea of where I was going with this piece. The, the whole idea was to have fun. And um, I talk about that inspiration and how I got there um, at the end of the video. So I hope you stick around for that conversation. So I, I did put some orange in that circle just because I knew I was gonna use that as a flower. Now, one of the one of the key things about this is creating, um, putting paint down and creating contrast around the images that I really want to keep. 
um, like my butterflies and different things like that and making sure that there's either light or dark next to it that really makes it stand out. I do also know that I'm going to shade so that will add some contrast as well. I'm adding some just kind of weird and funky shapes. Again, really trying to just play and have fun and not think too hard about what I'm doing and just really, really enjoy the process. A lot of times I can overthink something and overwork an area and I worked really hard this time to just kind of put some brush strokes down and let them be. Um, there are certain areas that I go back over several times just because I need that, that contrast between my focal images. Um, I don't want to cover up that plant image because that's kind of the background to my flowers that I'm going to be putting down. So I get some just real light color over that and really keep that front and center. Keeping my butterflies as, as um, focal points as well. And really just getting color down to kind of um, get that background started. And then I can kind of come back in. Once I get my flowers in, I can really come back in and see what I need to edit out and what I want to keep. And that's really all it is when I'm creating is doing one layer at a time and editing as I go, figuring out, uh, I do like that, I don't like that. So I've got this bird here that is just so cute. And that's one of, that's from one of the collage packs, the American Bird collage pack that'll be on sale this week. Put him down and I kept the branch. It was kind of random. I kept the branch and part of the outer edge of that bird just because I was trying to think outside the box and be different. So that was my mum stencil. And this is the Flower Silhouette 6 stencil. And um, really trying to just kind of get an idea, okay, where... Do I want the stem? How do I want, do I want to put a full stem in? What do I really want this to look like? And so um, just kind of really, again, playing and seeing where this is going to go. Putting in my leaves, I knew I wanted to put some paper in for the leaves, but I wasn't sure where. Um, and I wanted it, again, not to look super planned, um, so I just grabbed really honestly some papers from my stash and that happened to be a music sheet for my leaves. And um, just again adding some fun and interest to the piece. Now I'm just coming back in and painting, doing my painterly strokes on my stencil, um, adding to it a little bit. And then I go with, I go with um, just a shade lighter or a little bit lighter color to add to my flowers, to add some interest, some highlight. And of course, I love using my stencils as my guide because I can get my, I don't have to think about it. I have got my shape and all I have to do is worry about putting in colors to add a highlight or depth. So I'll continue to kind of work back and forth with my flowers, adding highlight, low light. Um, I use gesso and I use a lot of the flesh color from Nova Color in, in my highlights for this piece. And um, I'm adding extra leaves and kind of fiddling with the stems just a little bit because I wasn't sure if I wanted them to be charcoal or if I wanted to paint them in and I ended up painting some of them in, or part of them in actually even, and uh, again, leaving it really kind of whimsical and fun. So this leaf here, I wanted, um, I wanted to leave it mainly the background and highlight around it to bring it into focus. And it took me a little bit of time to kind of figure out what looked good. And so now as I'm doing this, you can see I'm starting to do the editing process of really adding to the background to make my focal points stand out because otherwise they kind of get lost in there and the more either light or dark or different color from what I actually so if I had on the yellow flower added more yellow around it it would have pushed it back into the background and not stand out so I have to add a contrasting color like that dark blue or something like that to 
around the flower to really make it stand out. So I'm making this this tall flower, which is kind of representing a sunflower, really whimsical. It's it's kind of a flower of my imagination, basically, and I love it. It's it's pr probably my favorite flower flower of the whole piece. <laughs> adding just some little tiny brush strokes to um, be some white flowers in the background, super simple. And I'm going to fuss with this leaf over here for a while because I couldn't quite figure out what it needed to really make that leaf stand out and keep the background as the leaf. <clears throat> I will fuss a little bit around certain areas just because I knew that I didn't have the right amount of contrast to make the areas that I wanted to stand out stand out. And that's kind of what you have to do. You just kind of have to go back and forth um, with your contrasting colors and figure out, okay, does that add to it or does it take away from it? And again, I also knew that I was going to be shading so I could add my contrast that way too. So I was, <clears throat> I was loving how the bottom was looking except for that right corner. You can see I could start to kind of cover it up a little bit. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling that, that corner, but I loved the other half circle um, stenciled pattern image and so I'll end up really covering up that other corner quite a bit. So I had this piece of purple um, like jelly print. These are jelly prints or scrap papers that I put down. This is and that corner down there I put down um, some deli paper that I'd used as a for like a jelly plate. These are napkins, pieces of um, napkins that black and white. So I'm just adding bits and pieces of some scrap paper that I had to kind of bring out some color that I brought pink down to the bottom and I covered up that corner that I wasn't really sure about. So now I knew that I wanted even more drama and and um, depth in that corner and um, kind of covering that butterfly a little bit, kind of making it part of the background, but not doing too much. And I'm using Liquitex acrylic ink. And I liked that drip, but I didn't want it to cover my leaf, so I kind of fussed with that a little bit. Adding, bringing some of that drama down into that corner, that, that troublesome corner that I couldn't find what was going to make me happy. Adding some scratches and some marks. And then just a few more um, stencil designs in black for contrast and interest in opposite corners to kind of draw the eye around. And that was the carved numbers and the journal writing stencil. And so I wanted certain areas to be very light to kind of represent day and night. So now I'm going to start shading and this is, <clears throat> this is where I'll really be able to add my contrast and my drama. And I'll be using my charcoal pencil and my Stabilo Woodies and my soft pastels kind of all at the same time finding that sweet spot of highlight and low light in, in like the stems or the leaves and um, really trying hard to keep it fun and very colorful and whimsical. So all of the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog will be down below in the YouTube box.
and I'm just going to continue to kind of fuss with it and it, it's always hard to know when to stop um, but I've been really working on less is more and so I'll just continue to do some shading and then I will add my words and I do share about the words and the inspiration at the end of the video so I hope you stick around for that conversation And don't forget that the one sheet will be free in the resource library. And if you are a subscriber, please check your email this week um, because the um, subscriber resource library um, password will change this week. And so you'll need to get the new password in your weekly email. adding some stars and some hearts. Again, contrast, bringing, bringing light to that dark area um, without taking away the drama of that dark area. So my friends, that is about it. I'm just gonna fuss a little bit more and add my words um, and that is it. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. If you did, subscribe and like and share and all those wonderful things. So grateful that you are here with me today and I will see you next week. Well, hello, my loves, and happy Sunday to you. And this is happiness. Oh, it just makes me so happy. The colors, all the things, all the papers, all the stencils. I uh, just uh, makes me happy, which was the point, the whole point. Um, so there were two collage packs, I believe, that I used um, for this. Let me... Let me look really quick. Yeah, there's two collage packs that I used for this and those will be on sale this week. And then there's a lot of stencils that I used, lots of fun ones. Those will be on sale this week. Um, that is pretty much it. Um, if you, um, I, did, I'm, I did a live last week and um, that was a lot of fun. I, Mistelle and I were testing out our new system. And so we will be, now that we've got it figured out, we'll be doing regular lives together, painting together, which I'm super excited about. I just love Mistelle. But if you miss that, um, you can see that on YouTube or it's on Instagram and it's on Facebook. And let's see what else. There's a couple of fun things in the subscriber resource library. I put in a couple of videos. If you haven't seen them on social media, they're in the resource library as well. And then this one sheet right here, <clears throat> the one with the kind of grassy um, grasses, that will be free to you in the resource library. And I think, I think that's it. Uh, so... This week I was just doing some journaling and um, trying to just find gratitude and that's kind of a regular practice for me. And so I Googled really fast, just like, um, cause I had written down, I was actually inspired by my own words, <laughs> which is awesome, but I had written down, um, you know, kind of my gratitude, um, um, what I was looking for as far as what I was grateful for and that kind of thing. And then I wrote, um, 
look for the good in all th in all all the stuff and all the craziness. And I was like, ooh, look for the good. That could be like a really great piece, like like happy, like uh, just a happy piece. Because um, all the pieces of late have had some really deep, kind of deep meaning. And um, I was kind of feeling like I needed just kind of some light, just happy. Um, and so I started to look for the words, look for the good. Um, I Googled it, um, thinking that there might be other words or different things like that that would go with that um, to kind of give it a broader meaning. And as I did that, I came across Jason Mraz's song, um, and it's called Look for the Good. And um, so when I pulled it up, I was like, oh, so good. I mean, it's just a fun, light heart, just light, um, feel good song. So I'll, I'll have a link to the, I think there's a YouTube video of it, but I printed out the, um, lyrics and I just want you, I want to read it to you really quick. It says, look for the good in everything. Look for the people who will set your soul free. It always seems impossible until it's done. Look for the good in everyone. And then it says, people done gone crazy, people done gone mad, people done forgot their superpowers we all have. We were born to love, not hate. We can decide our fate and look for the good in everyone and celebrate our mistakes. There, If there's a silver lining, you still have to find it. And, you know, it's find it, find it. It's I, it's such a, like a fun, just a fun, relaxed song. Um, and then it says, look for the good in everything. And then the second verse says, everyone needs sunshine. Everyone needs rain. Everyone is carrying around some kind of pain. I see you. J you're just like me. I see you're searching for a purpose guided by a dream. I see who you are. I'm just like you. And again, when we find when we find that we're more alike than we are different, it's easier to see to to see the good. Um, I see who you are. I'm just like you. I get lost sometimes, and I forget what I came here to do. I keep on trying, when it gets frightening. Which, it, it's such a testament to how the world is right now. Um, and then it, you know the the verse. Um, or the chorus, look for the good in everything. And then um, this, the third verse is, everyone is nature, everyone is God, everyone is love and light and vibration. Look for the good. Look for the good. Everyone gets mad sometimes, and maybe they should, but still look for the good. Look for the good. Yeah, look out for all the heroes in your neighborhood. Look for the good. Life sure would be sweeter if everybody would. Well, that's all I got to say. Um, if we can find the good in, in our um, world, our community, our home, our lives, our souls, find our own good, uh, it makes all the other things much, much sweeter, much more bearable. It makes our, our art brighter and beautiful when we look for the good. All right, my loves, that it's short and sweet today. Um, super happy about this piece. Um, and I am just looking for the good in all of the things <laughs> that, that are go that's going on. Um, so I hope that your Sunday is restful and peaceful and that you find the good in your space, in your community, in your heart, your world. Um, it's there. We have to look for it. And sometimes it's hard. Um, but we are all more alike than we are different, and um, we all are are striving to make our our ha families, homes, lives better. Um, and we just got to look for the good, and that's it. All right, my loves, have a wonderful Sunday, and always, always know that you are loved.